there folks, welcome into today's video. I just went ahead and made a very tough decision and I went ahead and bought over $34,000 worth of a stock that is reporting earnings within the next 24 hours. And so nonetheless, we're gonna know uh, how this ends up working on the next 24 to 48 hours. And in this video, I wanna use this video, it's not just a, a, a you know a chance to talk about this stock and uh, kind of give my bold thesis a little bit on this stock and kind of share what I think is about to happen for this company's earnings and if I'm hoping this stock goes up or down on the earnings and if I'm interested in buying more shares, how many shares I own in the stock, all those sorts of things we'll cover in this video. But I think the main point that can be derived from a video like this is if you're building out a position in a stock, is it the right move to buy right before earnings come out or should you wait? And there's uh, kind of two trains of thought when it comes to this particular decision. And so that's exactly what we're going to get into in this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it as always. Don't forget to smash. Appreciate it in a huge way, guys. All right. So, uh, you know, obviously, if we look at the companies that reported earnings yesterday, well, some of them, right? You have Smile Direct Club down 20%. You have this Roblox up 42%. You have Palantir down over 9%. You have PayPal down over 10%. That was quite a move for PayPal there, right? And uh, nonetheless, if you look at this, you're going to say, well, you know, it's probably better to wait till after earnings, uh, you know, until after companies report to buy them, right? Because you're going to see some of these vicious, vicious downward moves. But on the flip side, you could look at this and you say, well, if you really, really like a stock and you really, really like its current valuation, why wait till after earnings? Because after earnings, guess what could happen? It could end up like a Roblox situation where the stock shoots up huge, right? Now, there are certain uh, basically earnings periods when there are a lot more stocks go down than up, right? And, uh, this, you know, this earnings period is kind of a little bit of a shaky one. A lot of stocks going down. But just because some stocks are going down, or let's say even over 50% of the stocks are going down, doesn't mean that you should make a decision and say, well... I can't go ahead and buy the stock because a lot of these stocks are falling on earnings. It doesn't mean your stock's going to do that, right? And I've definitely seen that happen before where a lot of folks will say, well, I'll wait till after earnings. Maybe things will clear up. Then the stock ends up going up 10, 20, 30%. And then they're like, well, uh, man, I don't know. I don't know if I want to pay this much now. Maybe it'll fall again. And then the stock ends up not falling and it just continues on an upward trajectory, right? And they never really get that position built. And so this is where you, 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 you come in, you may have to make a tough decision whether you want to buy a stock. I'm looking at uh, some stocks that reported here after hours, right? Coinbase reported down 14% after hours. Wynn Resorts, you know, this is this is why earnings are so unpredictable. Wynn, you know, basically fires their CEO, but they don't call it firing nowadays. It's kind of like, we part, we're going to part ways. Uh, it's very nice uh, the way they put it nowadays. But Wynn Resorts, nonetheless, you know, this is a company that you would think would be down huge. It's not down huge. You have Upstart Holdings down about 20% after hours. Look at this Poshmark down 25% plus after hours. So you're looking at a lot of stocks here after hours that are just getting absolutely decimated. And maybe this trend continues into tomorrow with a couple of my stocks reporting earnings, right? Uh, one being Tattoo Chef and one being this other company. And the, by the way, the stock I, I bought here, uh, you know, today is not Tattoo Chef. But, you know, if you look at this, it's like, wow, man, maybe maybe some, some vicious numbers are coming or something like that based upon these other moves. And maybe the stock is down 10, 20, 30% after hours tomorrow, okay? That's certainly a possibility. Now, I went ahead and said, I love this stock at its current valuation. And here's the thing, here's the thing with this stock. It's a beaten down dog stock, okay? Jim Cramer likes to tell you, uh, I, you know, there's always a bull market somewhere and it's my job to help you find it, something like that. I, my, my saying is, there's always a bear market somewhere and some beaten down dog stocks and it's my job to help you find those, okay? That's my saying, essentially. And um, this is one of those beaten down dog stocks that I came across over the last couple months and I've started buying. The stock is down way over 50% from its 52-week high. As a matter of fact, this stock is probably down, oh gosh, I would say like 70% from its 52-week high. It's went public in the past year and it's just trying to find its shareholder base out there and things like that. And uh, it came off a pretty good year last year for it. And to go public into a uh, year with tough comps is not the, the best move to usually make for a company, right? Uh, and the, but at the end of the day, when I look at the stock, I love it the long term runway this company has over the next five plus years. And so I'm a huge believer in it. And the risk for me is actually bigger to the upside than the downside now because the stock has gone down so much and the fall has been so dramatic. I think there's a higher probability the stock pops big than goes down big, right? And so when I'm looking at the stock, it's a stock I'm building and I want it to build it into a much bigger position. I'm actually looking at this one and I, I think there's a, you know, a bigger risk to actually the upside than the downside. And so that's why today I went ahead and started, you know, I bought more of this stock essentially. Now, 
I would love to buy a lot more shares after this earnings, and we'll get into all that in this video as well, okay? But basically, it's it's Honest Company, HNST, stocks trading at $8.96 or something like that. And uh, I'm like, you know, I love this company's valuation for where I think the stock price is going over the next three, five, seven years, right? And it's one of those stocks that makes me, uh, I think I'm gonna sleep very well at night holding the stock over the coming years. And so, yeah, I went ahead and bought a ton of shares in that account, bought a ton of shares in this account, all told, I think it's like $34,000 or something right around there. And as far as honest now, this is the shares I have in the public account. I'm up to 5,405 shares in that account. This account, I would love to get it up to 10,000 plus shares. This, so this is why I'm kind of hoping the stock goes down on earnings, right? I didn't go all in the stock or something like that where I'm like, I can't buy any more shares. Like, no, my, my hope is this stock shoots down to $7 after earnings. That's my hope. We'll see if it happens. Like I said, I think there's a higher probability it's going to go up rather than down. But my hope is that it falls to seven. Because if it falls to seven, I'm going to go ahead and buy, I'll double up my position essentially. I'll get to a 10,000 plus shares in the public account. And um, that would be a, a position I would I would definitely you know like to hold for years to go in the future. And then in my main private account, I'm up to sixteen thousand two hundred and twenty two shares. This one I'd love to get up to twenty five thousand plus shares in this particular account here. I have money ready to go. So if this one falls big, I'm ready to come in with the the capital and uh, buy up shares left and right. So my hope is it falls to seven on earnings. If it doesn't, at least I've built out somewhat of a position now in this stock where I have some, you know, real skin in the game, right? I, if you add up this and the other account, it's about $200,000. So at least I have somewhat of a position built where if the stock started to shoot up, right, in a major way, let's say all of a sudden it goes up 15, 20, 25% on earnings, at least I have something at play here that makes me feel comfortable. And I can, you know, if it does, you know, let's say make a 15% move to the upside or something like that, then all of a sudden I'm up, uh, what is that, $25,000 or something like that. In a very short amount of time, I'll take that, right? So yeah, that, that's kind of where I'm at with this particular stock, Honest, here. And if you didn't know, yeah, man, I might be helping out their future quarterly numbers based upon all the Honest products. I've been buying. Oh man, if you didn't know, I got a baby on the way and woo! Yeah, buying everything in sight for that baby. Uh, honest, honest, honest uh, soaps and, and shampoos and wipes and diapers and all that good stuff. Honest, honest, honest. Uh, I ought to name the baby honest with how much pr honest product I'm buying this uh, baby. And they don't just make baby products. That's a huge portion of their business is uh, diapers and wipes and those sorts of things. And if you go to a Target store, or somewhere like that, you're going to see massive displays for their, their diapers and their baby wipes in almost every single Target store you ever go into. But this is another important part of their business. If you didn't know, Jessica Alba is one of the, uh, well, basically the main founder of the company. And uh, they, have a, they have a beauty side of their business as well. And that's, an, that's a business opportunity that I think is um, underappreciated with the stock. I think Wall Street, you know, Wall Street really doesn't even know about this stock yet. But if they do at all, they're really just viewing this as a diaper company and a wipe company, right? With some soap and shampoos on the side but also they have a, a laundry business and then i think this honest beauty business has a lot of uh you know long-term potential there and the margins could be very good okay but just based upon the let's call it the baby opportunity i think this is a tremendous value like if the company didn't have anything and they were just a baby company i still think this stock is a, a steel deal you know basically at whatever it's trading at seven dollars eight dollars nine dollars right uh anything under ten basically it feels a steel deal for this company if all they had if literally all this company had they didn't have cleaning products they didn't have laundry related products if they didn't have the beauty business or, or any other expansion opportunities down the road and all they were in is baby i still feel like this company is a steel deal of a company you know i just think this massive upside here they also have a, a big uh, partnership with costco if you've ever gone into costco there's a high probability you've seen some honest products in there and so they do some some pretty big numbers in the Costco stores as well. And remember, you know, to get into somewhere like Costco, you have to be moving big volume. This is something we really learned with Tattooed Chef, right? If you're in Sam's Club and you're in Costco, those two move volume. It is about moving crazy units. Like you can be in a regular retail store and you don't have to move crazy units. But, in, you know, when it comes to yeah, you Costco, when it comes to Sam's Club, Woo! We, you better be moving product, okay? And so they've had a nice partnership for years with Costco, and uh, you know Costco's a huge important customer for them. Target is a huge important customer. Walmart very untapped for Honest, which is I think a long-term big opportunity for this company overall. They have a nice Amazon business that I think will build out bigger in the future, and they also have a, a very very healthy direct-to-consumer business, DTC, okay? Direct-to-consumer, which if you understand anything about direct-to-consumer 
consumer business, usually that's much more profitable, right? Because then you don't have to discount. You don't have to discount to the retailer because if they're selling, you know, let's say Costco selling this Honest uh, Lavender uh, Bubble Bath for 22 bucks, right? I don't know. Honest might have sold them that for 11 bucks or 12 bucks or something like that, right? Maybe $13, maybe $14. But nonetheless, it's a lot less than $22. But here on, on you know, Honest's website, if they were to sell an equivalent of that, they could, they could sell it for 22, right? Or this product over here for 1949. And then they get that extra margin. So that's the one beautiful thing about direct to consumer. However, the tough thing is getting enough customers to really make that make a dent in your business. Cause we know Costco has all the customers, right? We know Target has all the customers. There's, you know, thousands, if not 10,000 plus people a day walking into those stores just on an individual one by one basis, right? Never mind when you add up the whole store counts overall. So yeah, you know, this is a huge partnership they have with Costco. It's very, very important on top of Target. Now, I think this is a uh, very important, okay? So what you're looking at here is uh, the number of live births, okay, in general, fertility rates in the United States of America, 1990 through basically, uh, you know, around 2020. And I think these numbers are about to switch. And why do I believe this? Well, the way I look at it is one, you had 2020 was just a, a huge step back for babies. Okay. The reason being is, you, you know, if people were forced to be home. You couldn't meet anybody. And if you weren't already in a relationship, that's just, you know, not an ideal situation. Okay. And so you had that going on. But then on top of that, you know, if you look, the, the rates have been going down quite substantially over the years. I think a lot of that is because of, of my generation, the millennial generation. And the thing that's different with the millennial generation is when it comes to them and thinking about having kids, a lot of them don't contemplate it until their 30s. And I, you know, I have most of the people I know around me, friends, acquaintances, things like that, are in their 30s, right? Or just, you know, about to enter their 30s, right? They're millennials. And so a lot of those folks want to have kids, but they've all talked about they want to have kids in their 30s, not in their 20s, which is a very, very different mindset shift than what we had in previous generations. When previous generations, it was like you had your, you know, you at least started having kids in your 20s, right? And just a lot of folks don't look at it like that in, in, in the millennial generation. They're just like, hey, man, I'll have kids when I'm like 32, 33, 34. And that's, you know, their own decision. I can tell you me, uh, you know, having kids in my 20s, I'm like a dying breed out there, okay? It's just not something a lot of folks in my generation can consider. They're like, oh, the 20s, you, you know, they're like, that's for partying or that's for working, one of the two, but it's not for kids. And so, you know, that's just a different mindset. But in my opinion, these numbers will tick up. Now, will they ever tick up to here? Probably not. But I think these uh, substantial drops are going to, you know, kind of switch like this. Okay. That's what essentially is going to happen. It's going to go do, 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 something like that. Okay. And so that's obviously a boom for honest, but I don't think that's even that important. Okay. And the reason being is honest at the end of the day is the small guy coming in to take some market share, right? They're not the big, you know, company that's already been there for a hundred years. They're not Pampers. They're not Huggies, you know, Pampers and Huggies. They have to fear everybody coming in to try to take market share like an honest, right? And any more shelf space these other companies get is more of a threat to a Huggies, a Pampers or those established companies. And so that's some, some more kind of food for thought there. It's not just about these rates turning. That would be positive. It's about Honest taking, you know, just little bits of market share. If Honest just takes 1% market share, that's that's a huge thing for Honest's company. If they take 2%, 3%. Like these are massive deals for, for honest nonetheless. Okay. And so, yeah, but anyways, I think there's going to be a, a different tick that happens over the next uh, three to five years here where you get back to actually growth, which would be the first time we've had any sort of a, you know, major growth in, in quite a while. <laughs> Let's just put it that way in those numbers. So keep an eye on that over the next few years. Now, as far as their earnings go here, and they're about to report, I haven't been following the company long enough. Like I've only been a shareholder for a very short amount of time yet. I haven't been following the company long enough to be able to predict what I think their revenues are going to be. So I'm not going to go that far. However, I think in 2022, I think that this company is going to have very healthy margins. And I think there's a high probability this company will be profitable in 2022, which will be 
massive in my personal opinion. I think this would be huge if this company can have very healthy margins that are potentially even going up and a you know a profitable bottom line. I think that will change the way a lot of investors look at this business and that will just be one of those things. And if all of a sudden they're profitable and they have growth, you got to understand the fund money will come flying in this baby because they're going to look at it and they're like, oh, this is a pretty dang safe business model. They sell diapers and wipes and, and makeup and, and uh, cleaning products and things like that. Hmm, I like this one. Right. If it has growth, which they're expected to do about 13 percent revenue growth, uh, nine analysts cover this stock. Right. Double digit revenue growth. And they're supposed to be profitable. That would be massive for this company. And I think it is very, very doable for the company overall. And uh, that's why I'm really, really excited about this one, not just in 22, but 23 and 24 as well over the next several years, because I think this one just has tons of upside potential. And um, yeah, so that's why I went ahead and bought it today. That's like I said, it's a hard decision to make to go ahead and make a decision like that, right? And go ahead and say, I'm going to buy right before earnings, more shares, but I, I need some more skin in the game just in case this baby shoots up. My hope is it goes down and it's trading at a $7 range. If it does, I'm all okay with that. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, hope you enjoy my transparency and just kind of sharing my perspective on a subject like this. Just so you know, we got a massive Black Friday sale coming for the private stock group. It is uh, only a few weeks away. So if you want to be on the notification list, as soon as the deal drops, make sure you go ahead and uh, get on the notification list. Much love as always, guys, and have a great day.